guys, how's it going? So this morning I want to give you kind of a mini garden tour of this flower bed that lines the west side of our house. It's come a really, really long way uh, since we moved in. In fact, when we moved in, I think we maybe have pictures or footage that we'll throw up for you to look at, but it was just a kind of gob of overgrown plants. There was a quince that was huge, overgrown dogwoods, overgrown wild roses, like they had reverted to whatever the rootstock was. Um, and so it was just kind of, it needed attention. So we had everything pulled out and we had a blank slate. In fact, I didn't put very much in here over the past couple of years. It's really been just this spring where I really amped it up and kind of started filling it in. So I thought you guys might like to see it because it's full of color and it's looking really pretty right now. I want to start in this front corner right here. There was a blue cedar that was here that I actually really liked. It was um, a type of pyramidal blue cypress. Anyway, I can't remember. It actually died the very first winter we were in here. It was a really hard winter. Um, so it took that. I decided to put a Japanese maple here, which was struggling in its nursery can down at the garden center. And I really liked it though. I liked the shape of it. I liked the architectural look and it really needed to just be planted and get in the ground so it could start growing and establishing somewhere. And this is kind of the perfect location in our area for Japanese maples because they can't take our hard afternoon sun or our hot afternoon sun rather. Um, that's why I don't plant one on the other side where the AC unit was. That's been a huge suggestion I noticed from you guys, like put a Japanese maple there. I would love to if it wouldn't like fry right there. So this is my little Japanese maple. I honestly, I can't remember the variety of it. There wasn't a tag on it when I bought it. So anyway, I'm just enjoying what it looks like right here. And right beneath it, I've got black pearl hookahs, which are just, they have filled in so, so beautifully. The first year I was kind of noticing there was um, like a little bit too much space for my liking in between the plants. So I went in with this grass. This is like Acarus Ogon is what it's called. Um, it looks like a Carex, but I kind of wanted one to fill some space in between the plants and then also to bring a little bit of a bright pop because this is a shadier area, especially in the afternoon. It's pretty like deeply shaded right here. And when you have a dark foliage plant, sometimes you can lose it. You don't really see it. Um, so I wanted something to provide that contrast where it's like, whoa, there is actually some beautiful plants in here, beautiful foliage. They happen to be blooming right now. One of my favorite hookah blooms that there is, and I know it's like not a very bright color, but I love the deep burgundy stems and then that creamy pink bloom. They're a beautiful filler for um, cut arrangements. And I just really like it because it doesn't distract my eye from what's going on beneath it. So that's this little corner right here. Everything is just doing beautifully in here and establishing, um, coming back consistently after the last couple of winters. Then if we move on, there's actually, I'm gonna try to step in here a little bit. Woo, it's getting harder to do that. Um, we've got a limelight hydrangea. Now I do have three limelights planted right up in the front flower bed that are huge, doing gorgeous. Now this one isn't quite as big because it doesn't get quite as much sun. It's still very healthy, it puts on blooms, but it just stays a little bit smaller, which is okay for this area because it is filled with other things. I planted some uh, foxglove this spring. Aren't those just the most gorgeous looking blooms? The honeybees love them. I see actually the bumblebees crawling up into their blooms a lot. And this was a mix. Um, I bought four inch cans. I planted them just kind of in and around some hookahs that I have in here. So moving on, there's Anna's red, um, not hookahs, hellebores. And these bloom a beautiful red color. This is what they look like when the blooms fade. And I actually leave them because I think they're really interesting to look at. The reason I like this hellebore so much though is because of the variegated foliage. It adds some interest for the leaves to have that variegation in there. So I added the foxgloves to mix kind of in with the um, hellebores because once the hellebores are done blooming, I wanted something to kind of rise up and take over in terms of color interest. So beneath the hellebores, I planted some saxifrage. I think it's a, a really picketty red. It's kind of more on the pink side of red. In fact, if they get more sun, which they probably would like, this spot was a lot sunnier in the spring before the lilac right next to me leafed out. And I do that sometimes. Like I don't think about the fact, you know, that things will, you know, how things evolve in the garden and how the light changes throughout the year based on what's leafed out and what's not. But it still looks very sweet under planting, under planted with the hellebores. Um, and I just like the little fairy flowers that they have. So it might be something I end up needing to move at a later point um, if they end up really not thriving in this spot. Um, but that's just kind of how gardening goes sometimes. You see right here our AC unit. I actually don't mind looking at it one bit because this used to be like, you know, in front of our house, like right in the entryway. Um, there was this big chunky privet hedge around it that was just, 
it was just not good. And I was so thrilled that they um, suggested that they could move it over here. I didn't know it was possible um, that I don't even mind looking at it like it's kind of a, a proud thing for me at this point. I don't know, at some point I might try to cover it, but it's not a priority right now. Uh, moving down, I've got a David Austin Rose here called Teasing Georgia. Gorgeous, gorgeous yellow flowers. The scent on them is wonderful. And it's perfect because there's a meter, a gas meter right behind this obelisk. And I didn't even ask the guys to put it right here, but I wonder if they were thinking about it um, when they installed it. Like, oh, there's something already planted. Maybe that will hide this eventually. Um, which if that's what they were thinking, that's amazing. I, I don't know, um, but I love the rose. This is its second year. I planted it last spring. It's already grown up this tall. Um, and this is a rose obelisk from Gardener Supply. I can't remember what it's called, but um, anyway, I think it's kind of the perfect vertical element that I needed right here. Right here is a spilled wine wygilla that we planted here last year. It's just a beautiful small shrub with these kind of pink trumpet-like blooms. You can see they're just kind of going out of bloom at this point, um, but it's put on a really beautiful show throughout this spring. So I've been really happy with that. And this one, I'm trying to remember the size. We'll try to throw tags or information up on the screen for you guys on everything I talk about. But I want to say that this one only grows like two to three feet tall and wide. Uh, I think we'll see. Uh, right in front of that, we've got the Siloam Peony Display Daylilies. And you guys, these grow about 18 inches tall and wide. And then they send up stalks with the most gorgeous double peach colored daylilies you'll ever see ever. It's like my favorite daylily. I cannot wait till they start blooming. And I think it's going to be perfect because we've got summer color with the rose, summer color with the uh, daylilies, and then we've got our early color with the uh, wygilla, the phlox, and then we've got some other things that will actually they bloom now and they'll repeat bloom later on. But I think we'll have some pretty good color shows throughout the whole year. And that's something to consider when you're planning out your flower beds, you know, make sure that you've got interest for spring, summer, fall, and even winter, which I've got some winter interest as we move down a little bit. Um, this is called Opening Act White Phlox. I just planted three of these in this flower bed. They grow about 18 to 20 inches tall and wide, and I think they're a zone four through nine. Um, so they're very winter hardy. The cool thing about these, you might be familiar with like David Phlox that grows really, really tall, and I love that too, but it gets in our area powdery mildew pretty bad. Now these um, are more resistant to powdery mildew, uh, but they do benefit from having really good air circulation. That, so that's something to consider. And I figured I kind of spaced them apart from each other and kind of away from other things to where they've got a little bit of airflow. Back in here, and this is another thing about planting your flower beds and when they're really young, you've got to kind of use your imagination what things will look like once they grow up. And this is a ginger wine nine bark right here, which will grow about this tall. It'll grow wide uh, and that will be my red accent in here. And it may mean that I need to move a plant or two once it grows that big. In sunflower beds, I don't mind there being space while I wait for things to grow and fill in. But this one, I just kind of wanted to pack out with perennials and there are some annuals in here and just get it full of color. And it's made me really happy to work on this area. So anyway, I just try to use my imagination when this red shrub is a lot bigger and that way the phlox will actually be a better contrast. Cause right now I actually kind of wondered like, should I put white flowers in this bed when it's so close to the white house? Once this is big and providing that red backdrop, I think they'll show up even better. I do have kind of a menagerie of delphiniums in here, which we recently had a hailstorm come through and uh, a lot of them were toppled over and or broken. Um, so, you know, they do look pretty good though. I have to be thankful for all of those that still stood up. All of these were planted this spring. Four inch cans, they're all coming up beautifully. Like it's kind of crazy that they're doing as well as they're doing. Um, and then we've got pink potion Veronica right here. These were also a little affected in the hailstorm. They're kind of, um, they got beat down kind of from the center. So that's kind of why they look the way they do. But I love the way they look. If you're going down like the sidewalk and you can kind of see the pink blooms kind of coming over the edge of the sidewalk. It's just one of my favorite things. I love to see things that spill over. It kind of like draws me in and like wants me to, makes me want to walk down and look at that plant and see what it is. Um, so I think once these fill in and establish a little bit, they'll be just absolutely beautiful. And I think that these grow about 14 inches tall and wide. So they're really good for the front of a flower bed like this. So as we move down a little bit more, I did pop a few annuals in here just for some really punchy color. We've got Radiculus coleus, 
which is actually a replacement for marooned. I used to grow the marooned coleus by our back kitchen door, and this is an improved variety. It's got a really vibrant red color. So I planted four in right there, and they'll grow about this tall. Like they'll really fill in this area. And then, then I popped one back in here as well, just kind of flanking. This is a weeping white spruce. We did put together a video on this earlier. We can link that down below, but this one, grows only about two to three feet wide. So it's kind of perfect to tuck in a flower bed and then about 15 feet tall. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but it will clear the eave of the house. It won't be, it'll be close, but it won't hit it. And I kind of made sure that it was out far enough to where if it does reach that high, which it may not, it doesn't get full sun all day. In fact, this bed gets shade in the morning and it gets sun in the afternoon. So had, you know, I put all of these plants in a, an area that gets full sun all day long, the stuff might grow even bigger, but I think we're gonna be okay um, with where this is. And I love the structure. I love it in this area right here. It kind of breaks up that little space of house there. We've got a Powys Castle Artemisia right here just for a really ferny blue color. And I like to pop these in flower beds. I've got them in several spaces in my garden. Um, I front planted that with lemon coral sedum just for a bright pop of green. And lemon coral, is amazing. It'll create this really soft pillowy looking sedum right here and it will come out over the sidewalk. So we'll have like a little bit of green and then my pink blooms. It's gonna be really pretty. I heard the AC unit just turn on so I'm gonna run inside and turn that off because we're getting closer to it. Got the AC unit off. It's actually a small unit you'll see down the way a little bit. It's the one that cools off the old side of the house. So there are two really interesting plants right here. Here we've got a pink lemonade baptisia. I love the foliage on these plants. I think it almost has kind of an iridescent green look to it. I don't really know how to describe it. Like it looks soft. The blooms come out this really pretty pale yellow and then they age to kind of a deep pink color. Um, and I've got them planted behind our chicken coop as well. And they're just starting to establish and they grow like four feet tall and wide. So they create a nice size shrub and you cut them off kind of down toward the base of the plant every year. And then they come back fresh the year after. And I like plants like that, where you get all fresh, brand new growth. Right below that, we've got an oh so easy paprika rose. And you guys will have to give me your opinion on this one. When I look through this area and I'm kind of taking it all in, I like all the color. There's a lot of colors going on with um, blooms. This one, I love the color of, but I, don't, I can't decide if it's screaming at me or not. Like if it's not the right blend for this, this area, Aaron loves it. He loves the bright color right here. And I think I'll leave it for a while just to kind of live with it and see. I might have to take it out and put something a little bit more soft, but I don't know. I would love to know what your opinion is on that. But it's a wonderful rose that's a beautiful accent. So it only grows about two feet tall and then two to three feet wide. So this is like full grown right here. So it's just a beautiful little accent shrub that'll bloom all season long and you don't have to deadhead it. In fact, you can kind of see where some spent blooms are. They kind of end up just kind of disappearing and then new blooms keep coming. So you gotta love plants like that. Then as we move down, I may have planted the salvia a little too close to the sidewalk. <laughs> this one grows like I think 18 to 20 inches tall and wide. And it's definitely, it could be because it wants to reach out for more sunshine. It's getting enough to perform uh, in this spot. But this one's called Azure Snow. Azure? Azure. It might be Azure, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I love the bicolor blooms. They're purple and white, and so it makes this um, a little bit different than like your traditional dark purple salvia. Just gives it kind of a sparkly look to me. Um, right behind that, we have a Ruby Falls red bud, which I highly recommend planting this because they only grow about six feet tall. So they're a perfect accent tree and they kind of have a weeping habit. So if you take a look in here, this is the top. Here are the branches that are starting to weep down. I could use a better stake job. I need to get out here, do a little <laughs> maintenance. Um, but I love the structure even in the winter time. Oh, what is that? Oh, that was the weirdest looking bug. Kind of looked like a stick bug. Anyway, um, I love the foliage on this, heart shaped, dark purple with the green. Um, I just think it's beautiful. And it, they have um, really gorgeous violet colored blooms that come out early spring right off the trunk and all the branches. Um, but the fact that it only grows six feet is wonderful because it's hard to find accent trees, like little ornamental accents that actually stay small. Um, this area right here is looking a little bit more empty. And the reason for that is I do have a, um, this is a Desert Plains Penicetum perennial grass right here, which I am gonna move because it does not get enough sun here. But this is a Woo La La Hosta. These grow about four feet tall and wide. So this hosta will end up taking up this entire space. So I didn't really plant anything else around it toward the back. 
did pop a few more lemon coral sedum in here and then some hookerella kind of takes off in front of this shrub and this is called a blue kazoo spirea which is in full bloom right now it's looking really really pretty i planted the, this is like one of the first things i planted in this whole flower bed i think it's either the japanese maple or this kind of maybe probably around the same time um, but this one has beautiful uh, blooms and the foliage is really pretty it kind of takes on more of a blue hue and then i've got a limelight hydrangea standard right here which means tree form and so this just kind of fills in this area right here is kind of a small ornamental tree and it blooms pretty good for being in shady conditions and that's one thing i've learned in our area i always used to think the hydrangeas needed like a lot of shade and they never really did that great and that's because they actually do need quite a bit of sun in order to bloom and perform the best but here we do have to give them quite a bit of water to keep them happy in the sun otherwise they tend to burn um, but as long as you can meet that um, requirement give them plenty of water plenty of sun they perform so so well um, i've got some columbine right here i just planted these this spring um, they are called leprechaun gold and they've got beautiful yellow uh, variegated foliage and they've already bloomed you can see like the spent bloom stalks um, there's a couple blooms left but they have kind of downturned dark purple blooms that are beautiful i need to come out here and cut the bloom stalks off or you can leave them and i may end up doing that and then they'll scatter some seed and they may start naturalizing in this area which i wouldn't mind um, because they're a really soft resilient plant this hose is leaking weird anyway they're a really soft resilient plant and if i could get something to kind of self seed around these boxes that it doesn't really matter if they get damaged at some point, you know, something that'll just keep coming back. I think that that would be really good. Um, we've got a coast to coast hosta right here, um, which I just popped in there late last fall. I think I had it in a container. So I ended up popping it right there because I thought it could fill in this area and soften the edges of all these boxes, which we have a lot of right here. Um, I did put a Japanese maple in this container. This is a Crimson Queen uh, with some Carex right below it because we've got a lot of, um, if I kind of tip that, you can see the meter back there and a bunch of other things, which can all be painted to match our house. I just haven't got around to it yet. And then as we reach the end of this tour, this is the only thing that we left that was here. The boxwood hedge was here, which I'm so glad it was. It's a beautiful hedge. I planted a Katsura Japanese maple in the corner, and then I had planted a bunch of flocks in here last year, and some of it came back, some of it didn't. So I came in with some Western sword ferns earlier this spring, and they were just in little four inch cans and I popped them in all over in this area and they grow like two and a half feet by two and a half feet. So they should eventually fill in this whole section and just be a really soft, lush green area. And the Katsura, um, come, when it comes out in spring, it's like a reddish orange and then it also turns that way in fall. So that's it, you guys. That is the tour of this flower bed. And I just wanted to take a little time and go through plant by plant and just show you how I was combining things, how things were doing. Um, I had no plan for this area. It kind of came about by just seeing something I liked and popping it in the ground. Um, and sometimes you get the best results that way and sometimes you learn that way, what you do and don't like together. Um, it's just kind of all an evolving process. Um, but when we do a full on garden tour, I don't ever have time to go really slowly and talk about each plant. So I thought it would be really fun and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.